So Nigeria is integrated more than ever across religious lines and ethnicity. Aside the foregoing, killings, kidnappings, ill governance, corruption, rituals, cultism, all have forfeited all our, uh, the progress we've made in the past years. Welcome, sir. It's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. So, <clears throat> sir, I mean... As much as I want us to celebrate and be excited about this year's Easter, yes. but there's so much happening in the land, cultism, kidnapping, killing, insecurity. We see Reverend Kuka mentioned the other day, just on, over the over Sunday, that the country obviously is in a state of emergency. What message can we have of Easter today that can actually help to alleviate this pressure Nigerians are feeling right now? I, I think um, the most important message of Easter is peace. Because again, it has to do with someone giving his own life for humanity mm. on the cross. And the cross, it wasn't like this. It was two outstretched hands pulling people together, mm. the Jews and the Gentiles, mm. the Fulanis and the Yorubas, the Ebos and the mm. Shekiris. Can we come together? Mm. That's what Easter is all about, peace. That's what Jesus epitomized in scriptures. That's what he preached mm. on the scripture. Even on the cross, he mentioned something. He said, forgive them. Mm. Easter is about forgiveness. Mm. Not, not while he left the cross, while he was on the cross, while he was in pain, he said, forgive them. Those that put me here, let's preach forgiveness, let's preach tolerance, let's preach peace, let's preach um, inclusion, let's pull people close, and let's build one nation. Because mm. again, it's about one body, but bringing many into one. Mm. Different people, the adversity should be our strength, mm. should never, never be a problem. Right. So I think the message for Easter should be peace. This season now, people find it difficult to sacrifice. We would expect people of Bishop Kuka's standing to preach that sacrifice, letting go yeah. of your pain and, you know, fostering peaceful coexistence. Yes. But when you stand on the pulpit, when people and you have a massive influence yes. and you only highlight problems, you know, you put it out there, highlighting this tension in, this, in the country without necessarily telling people, let's go. Uh, How do we continue? Without preferring you know, solutions. As preferring solutions. Yeah, no, 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 no. The news people yeah. tend to just take the sad yes, part of the please. stories. They always tend to highlight the, neg the yeah. negatives. Yeah. Yes. They don't take the full sermon. Yeah. I've heard, I've watched... Um, Reverend Kuka. Um, Reverend, not Reverend Kuka. Um, Pastor Tude Bakari. Yes. And I've watched this full sermon. Yes. And I'm surprised yeah. at the quotes Marriage. that paper takes out of it. Yeah. It's only the few minutes he spends on the problem. And they don't highlight the long time he spends on the solution. Yeah. So I think that many people getting their news from papers alone might not be the... So NIT, I said so, Kuka, um, not... Yeah. I didn't no, 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 yes, but also to be very Bishop specific. Bishop Kuka's yes, statements in the papers this morning. To be very specific to Bishop mm -hmm. Kuka. He's a well-respected, well-loved yes. bishop. Mm -hmm. And he <laughs> preaches love. He, he, he preaches love. But he's also a man of, of influence. Yes. And the people that come to that con his congregations are made up of Nigerians who are yes. going through things. Yes. People who are at church have lost families to yes. banditry, to killings, to kidnapping. Mm -hmm. So it is only right that he highlights that. In, you know, um, in, in, in conjunction also with message for peace. So in making your point, you could say that, you know, without necessarily putting the, uh, uh, a name for him, like mm -hmm. he purposely and deliberately and only no, does that. I, I, I so disagree, is, though. Okay. As a clergy, okay. I could pick some of his sermons and then put it back to him. Mm -hmm. okay. For instance, one of the things he said in that sermon is that um, Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed, the child born to one of the sons of the 98-year-old high priest Eli. He said, the two sons took the ark into unfamiliar territory, the battle. The ark means the presence of God. I agree with that. that that's why we're in the problem today. We, clergy, are taking the presence of God into politics. Mm. We shouldn't be into, dabbling into politics. That's why we're in this mess. When preachers would name certain tribes as and evil and they situation. kill the full armies, that's taking the mm. ark mm. into wrong territories. Exactly. We should keep the hawk where it belongs. Keep our calling within the church. We've dampened into politics. We've, we are swimming there. The sharks are there. They are using us all for our personal gains. I think he may not have known that, but he is one of those that also took the hawk to where we shouldn't go to. We can have our own opinions, but we can't have our own facts. You should go out there, share your own thing, and prefer solutions. Mm -hmm. Let's build one nation. Mm -hmm. Let's have one peace. What would be the core message you believe the the this season should symbolize to people and how would you want us to respond to one another in this season? Forgiveness, love, 
base. They are the three things Jesus came to preach. Listen, I totally share your views and your sentiments. I'm as concerned as most Nigerians on the street that we not speak with one voice. It's painful to me as well. And we need to get to the point where we say, what would Jesus do? In a situation where there's a mistrust of each other, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't have confidence in each other, and there's a distrust of the government. We don't believe that the government has our best interests at heart. How do I have peace with people who I just feel like they hate me? We don't, we don't trust each other. That's where you need moral leaders and patriots. Hmm. All great nations in the world have been built by patriots, not politicians. Hmm. We don't have patriots in this country. Hmm. And that's the truth. There's a difference between politicians and patriots. Moral leaders and just commercial leaders, or whatever you want to call them. Hmm. Moral leaders. Mandela was a moral leader. Gandhi was a moral leader. These guys think of good and evil. No matter who does it, they tell you this is evil. Hmm. If it's my tribesman, if it's my town, my village, they say this is wrong and must not be done. They'll condemn it. Hmm. And we should condemn what your bad guys do as a bad man. I will condemn Igbo man should condemn what an Igbo man does as an Igbo person. I will say I should condemn what another man does as a, that's what moral leadership is all about. Mm. Nigeria, we don't have moral leaders and we don't have patriots, unfortunately for us. Mm. That's why we're in this mess. And I've been praying for the past 10 years, God raise patriots for this country. Mm. We do have people that like this country. They want the thing to just go anyhow because of corruption. They want to make money. Corruption has killed us. It's all about making money. We need patriots and we need moral leaders yes. for us to raise a great nation.